Next to sport and the contrasting fortunes of two of our national teams in recent days and what it says about the health of the games. Here's Connor Wilson. Jacob Scott in! An historic win. An inspirational performance that saw Irish rugby stake its claim to world supremacy, all to the approving roar of the Aviva Stadium crowd. It was a sharp contrast with that same stadium just 48 hours earlier, where Ireland's footballers played out a drab, scoreless friendly with their Northern Ireland counterparts. The glory days of Irish football seem ever more distant. Rows between players and coaches, reluctance of some players to commit, a run of four games without a goal and relegation to Division C of the Nations League. It paints a miserable picture of our international men's football team. Sad. At the same time, Irish rugby can attract arguably the world's best coach in Joe Schmidt. It can boast some of the world's best players with a conveyor belt of young talent coming behind them. And the team will head to next year's World Cup as one of the favourites. Rugby is by no means the most played game in this country. It's comfortably behind soccer, Gaelic games and several others. Compared to soccer, it's a game played by far fewer people globally too but it is unquestionably a sport on the rise. It's a sport that the IRFU has grown and brought to a point where an Irish team is foremost among the world elite. By any rationale, it's an incredible achievement and one the country can be rightly proud of. It's not always helpful to directly compare two different sports. Ireland's footballers face a difficult and exceptionally competitive route to even play at international level. For the fans put off by dull games and a lack of goal scoring, a return to the glory days will look highly unlikely in the short term. But are there lessons to be learned from the rise and rise of Irish rugby? Connor Wilson reporting there on a great day for Irish rugby and some not so great days for Irish soccer. I'm joined now by soccer pundit and former League of Ireland manager Pat Dolan. Pat, what's gone wrong with Irish soccer? Well, we were promised by the manager Creativity Monday, weren't we? And uh, it certainly didn't work out that way because on Creativity Monday, we didn't even have a shot on target. And um, I feel very sorry for Martin O'Neill because it's not an easy job to manage the Irish Republic uh, team. But he certainly looks like a guy that does not have the answers. Modern football, you have to have that special bond and relationship uh, with the modern player. And yet when he talks, it's always negative. OK, but you could make the argument that a manager can only deal with what he or she has to deal with. And uh, perhaps Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane are doing as well as can be expected with the players they have. Well, I'm sure they think that uh, maybe they're doing a good job, but this isn't Brazil. If you're a manager of the Brazilian national team, then you have some of the best players in the world. If you want to get the best out of the Irish players, you have to do what Joe Schmidt does and recognise that he has to get every single ounce of effort and passion and connection. Where is the connection between our top players uh, and Martin O'Neill? I mean, I've been friends with, with Shane Long for a long time. I managed him. I, I became his agent. I brought him over to the UK. The fact is, he's the seventh highest goal scorer at international level in our history. And yet, he listens to Martin O'Neill saying he hasn't got a goal scorer. Well, actually, he's got one that's the seventh in, in our all-time history. That's the Martin O'Neill philosophy. It's very sad, he's a great man, but it's over. You know, on Sunday, we've got the Euro 2020, one of the host, 12 host nations of this massive tournament, the third biggest tournament after the Olympics and the World Cup in the world. And we look as though we've got no chance of even qualifying, never matter. And if we do qualify, are we going to embarrass ourselves in the way that we play? Football isn't played in the way that Martin O'Neill believes, it's, it, he believes that the football should be played. It's gone, it's, it's over, it's 40 years ago. OK, uh, it's more than just the manager, though. The problems go a lot deeper than that, I presume, into the structures. I mean, you can't compare soccer with rugby. Rugby has, you know, four successful provincial teams. Players are able to stay at home and earn a living. Not the same in soccer. Yeah, that's, that's a really uh, good point. But to be fair to the FEI, um, and they are taking a lot of criticism because of the performance of a national team. Um, only, only yesterday, on the same day that we were quite poor once again in Denmark, our under-18s played the Netherlands. And we beat them in a tournament in Spain. So we do have good young players. We brought in uh, Rude Doctor, um, you know, a Dutch uh, 
performance director. I'm sure that when he looks at the uh, performance of our international team, our top side, that's not the type of performance that he's asking the under-18s who are successful, the under-19s, the under-20s to play. So there is this disconnect between the good elements of what's happening in Irish football and our top international side. It's just not good enough. OK, 30 seconds or less, how do we fix it? I think we've got the, the draw on Sunday week. We have to sit down with Martin and, and give him a choice. He either changes or he goes. And I just can't see. I mean, look at his goalkeeping coach, Seamus McDonald. Look at the effort that he puts in as a coach on the training ground. And our goalkeeper is our best ma player every, every week. Martin O'Neill, a great man. It's up to you, Martin. Unless you change, you have to go. OK, Pat Dolan, thank you very much.